Chapter 28 Bless Freddy and I, we worked ourselves into a frenzy one day, trying to get a 54 Chevy off the road before it got towed. He had us help him with tools under the car, running to the AutoZone for parts and searching for things in the shed. When he finally fired her up after a jump, we all cheered. Then we were anchored to the old couches in Bless's living room. Her old man was gone, but came back booming into the house, slamming doors and drawers and cabinets, screaming. Where the fuck is it? He was looking for his dope. Bless and I both bolted up. Freddy was unaffected. What in the hell is the matter with you coming in here like that, you old goat? Bless shouted back at him. The old goat started searching the cupboard in the pantry. Bless kept on. Me and my friends, we were trying to suck on some perfect silence before you came in and dropped your monster. Ouch, I said, mostly to myself. Freddy's eyes were open, but he let the lids down half-mast because he knew what we were about to see would not be pretty. No one else spoke in the room for about a minute. I could only hear drawers and cabinets opening and closing, then a tapping of the monster's fingers on the kitchen counter, and the sound getting louder as the place got quieter. Bless was trying to ignore him, and Freddy was still. I was feeling slightly nervous by the tension all around, and the tapping lodged into my brain <clears throat> like a Ren and Stimpy episode. Do you think you could go away already? No sooner had the words left her mouth, Everett said something terrible under his breath, then rushed her. Another couch fight. She slid out from under him, cursing him out, and backed into me. I put a hand on her shoulder. She was tense, locked into battle. She looked back at me for a wide-eyed second. Her face was angry, but her eyes flecked with hurt. He came at her again. I yelled, hey, don't, but it was too late. He grabbed her and twisted her arm behind her back to subdue her. Though she was trying to get some leverage with her other arm, I watched it fold and get crushed beneath her. She had her chin up off the wood floor and was growling a bit. He twisted harder, said nothing, and she dropped her head down sideways on the floor in pain. Bitch, she screamed, get off of me. He was holding her there, firm, undeterred by her insults. She bit his arm and he pulled away. I grabbed my legs up on the couch and was scrunching my knees into my ribs hard, hurting myself. I started chewing on my fingers. Why didn't I do anything? Because Freddy forbade me. He told me telepathically there'd be nothing we could do with these two. Not right now. This was a pattern madness and all that ferocity would be turned on anyone who tried to interfere. The energy in the room was convoluted. Freddy stood up. He wanted me out of there. He knew I could not stand aside and watch. He offered his hand and helped me up. Bless escaped and ran into the kitchen. I touched into her thoughts to see what she wanted me to do, and she gave me a clear signal. She was strong. She could work her way out by herself. Not to worry. We all had the metaphysical capability beyond bodies, so the size and strength of a person was not so dangerous to us. But Everett was one of us, who had the edge of subtle senses, could not be predicted, both at the moment exerting influence. Freddy pulled me out the front door with them. I couldn't resist the calm waves of our connection, 
against my desire to turn back and puncture a lung with some great concentration. <clears throat>